The seat is getting hot and hotter for Rigathi Gashagwa. Sometimes back, Rigathi told Kenyans that the courts were corrupt and he had some dossier against some corrupt judges. That was sometimes back, and I hope Kenyans can still remember, those outbursts by Rigathi Gashagwa. As I talk, it's now emerging that Rigathi Gashagwa has run to the courts to block his impending impeachment. The same regard who said the courts were corrupt and that he had a dossier has now run to the same courts. Let's listen to this resident of Nyahururu before we continue. Dennis Ndegwa Dereva, a youth reader and a resident and a Kenyan here in Laikipia County today. I have filed a petition against the impeachment in a discussion motion uh, of the parliament against impeachment of the deputy president. We cannot allow uh, the rest fortunate, the people who are, are saying what we want to hear, the people who are working for us to be impeached unconstitutionally. Impeaching a deputy president in Kenya now weakens the executive and we will not allow the executive to be weakened. We saw what happened when the CSS were not at work. Now, going to again, we lack a deputy president who was legally appointed and elected by the Kenyans is very unconstitutional, is very unfair to him, and it is even not just to him. Therefore, today, as a Kenyan, I have filed a petition against this injustice which is about to happen in the parliament. My impeachment says that there is no any intention that or any motion which can be discussed. And I want to urge the Judicial Service Commission and the judiciary at large to please take this very serious and give me those court orders to make sure that there is no discussion, there is no discussion of any impeachment model of the deputy president. We cannot weaken our executive that parliament wants to exercise its overpower. And the constitution is very clear in Article 150 of the constitution that says for you to impeach the deputy president, it gives the four areas that you should check. Parliament should now change from being a political bombastics, from being a political uh, 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 gimmicks, and they should be serious representing us. And we want to say, it is not our will as Kenyans, and it is not my will as a youth of this Republic of Kenya, to see these things happening the way they are happening. We will be there and we will fight for justice of this nation to ensure the rule of law and the natural justice occupies everywhere. Yes. Listening to that man, it's very hard to understand what he's trying to say. And I'm seeing a man who does not understand at all what it entails to impeach a deputy president or a president. He's clearly a person being used by some other individuals. He does not understand the whole process of impeaching a deputy president or a president. He's saying he's filing that petition to stop the impeachment. And the reasons why he's filing that petition is because if Rigadi is impeached, then the executive will be weakened. And then he goes on to say, Rigadi was appointed and elected by the Kenyans. Is it true Rigadi was appointed and elected by the Kenyans? That's not true. Ruto did appoint Rigadi, and Rigadi was not elected by anybody. So it's also very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that some of these Kenyans are buying into the lies being peddled by the politicians. Regadi has been on record saying he was elected by Kenyans. Kenyans never elected Regadi. Kenyans did elect William Ruto, not Regadi Gashagwa. And if you look on how a president or a deputy president can be removed in Kenya, we have only two grounds. 
either it can be removed on the grounds of physical or mental incapacitation or on the grounds of impeachment. And it's clear regarding is to be removed on grounds of impeachment. And if you dig deeper into the grounds of impeachment, then the Gadi might have violated the constitution, gross misconduct, or he must have violated national or international law. Those are the three reasons where a president or a deputy president can be removed through impeachment. And the procedure and the process has been laid out very clearly on how it should be done. A member of parliament initiates an impeachment motion being supported by a third of all members of parliament. A third of 349, that's about 117. If two thirds, 233 members of parliament supports that impeachment motion, it moves to the Senate. If two thirds also supports it in the Senate, then regardless stands impeached, he goes home. That's how it should be done, ladies and gentlemen. And now if you look at these new developments, it appears regarding Shagwa's only remaining hope is the court. The same court he did attack very badly. This again exposes that Rigadi is not very smart politically. He's not looking ahead. We have seen Rigadi asking for forgiveness from Uru Kenyatta, and some of his allies are now saying Ruto is the person who sent him to attack Uhuru Kenyatta, to attack Raido Dinga, Kweka Mitego. And now, I don't know what he will now say about attacking the courts. Did William Ruto send him to attack the courts? So Rigadi has to be very smart politically if he wants to survive. And also some Rigadi Gashagwa's allies are to be arrested. And today they moved to court and they obtained some court orders stopping their arrests. Republic of Kenya, in the High Court of Kenya at Nairobi City, court name Milimani Law Court, case number, citation, Honorable Gunjiru Ambugu and Honorable George, George Teuri and one others versus the Di Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Inspector General of Police and the two others. Orders, court documents, you are seeing the date 27th, 09, 2024 in Chambers, before I N Mugambi, judge, I have read the notice of motion dated 27th, September 2024, the certificate of urgency of even date, and the supporting affidavit sworn by Gujiro Ambugu, and thus issues the following order, and directions that pending the bearing so those are just the orders and if you go through those orders that court order is just stopping the arrest of the regarding the Shagwas allies until some other date so regarding and his team their only hope now is the court and again, if you look at that gentleman trying to block Rigadi's impeachment, I don't know why he's filing that petition to block Rigadi's impeachment in a Nyahururu court. Could it be possible that they have some friendly judges there who they want to use to frustrate the impeachment? And I know an impeachment cannot be stopped by the courts. That's like preempting what the National Assembly and the Senate are going to do. The courts can only come in after maybe the law has not been followed. After Rigadi has been impeached, that's when now the courts can come in to check whether the law was followed. But the courts cannot preempt what the National Assembly or the Senate will do. So the orders they're trying to seek, in my honest opinion, are null and void. Yes. They are null and void. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe 
you are watching us from. The mere fact that Rigabi has now resorted to go to the courts, that's an indication that the seat is becoming hot and hot on, and Rigabi is now seeing his impeachment looming. The best thing Rigabi should do is to resign. If he still buys time, he will be impeached and most definitely will be blocked from contesting for any other seat. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.